Yeah. You alright? Yeah, not bad. Um, listen, John, have you got any art lessons that also involve maths? Hmm. Um, art lesson plus maths. Now this is a really great activity if you're wanting to combine art and maths in a single lesson. And I love it because it sums up one of my favourite sayings, which is that simplicity equals sophistication. Now by that, what I mean is that if you start off with an art lesson that is complicated, often by the time that you get to the end, it has become confused. Whereas if you start off with something that's small, simple and easy to understand, as it grows and develops, it becomes complex and therefore more interesting and sophisticated. So we're going to begin with something really simple. We're going to create a parabolic curve, which is another way of saying that we're going to create a curve using lines that have been plotted on an X, Y axis. Now this is great because it's going to show your pupils how X, Y axes work, but it will also encourage them to be accurate when plotting their lines. And it will show them that if you create something that's systematic, you can create something that is beautiful over and over again, which is really important for the next stage. But let's see how we create that initial parabolic curve. One of the first mistakes your pupils are going to make when doing this, and mistakes are fine because it's through mistakes in art that we have learning opportunities, it's how we get better, you know that, but one of the first mistakes they're going to make is they are going to draw their straight lines from the number and not the marker on the X, Y axes. And so what you will find is that because they've written the numbers slightly differently along the lines, that the overall graph, the overall picture ends up being wonky. So try to encourage your pupils to put clearly defined markers along the X and Y axes and it's the markers that they draw between. So the best thing about this activity, and this is one of the reasons why I love doing it, especially with the older children, is that once they've understood the system, once they can do the X and Y axis, X and Y. See, I love this exercise because it really allows for independent work. Because once the pupils have understood the X, Y axis and have managed to create that curve, that's when repetition comes in. And it's through repetition that we embed skills where we understand processes and through repetition we are able to explore and therefore innovate. So repetition is really important in art lessons and this activity does that really well. So one of the things we know about X and Y axes is that you can have positive numbers, but you can also take that into the negative. And that also produces really interesting patterns. So encourage your pupils to do that. I mean, there are endless ways that you can take that simple curve and extend it and grow it and multiply it and turn it into something complex. So that's the time to let your pupils just go off and explore. There won't be any right or wrong answers. And if it doesn't look great, that's a learning opportunity for the pupils and they can always do it again. Now, rather than me go through all those different combinations, because there are too many to talk about, I'm just gonna draw you some examples of where you might want to take the curve and what it might look like, just so you've got a bit of a heads up. But to be honest, just explore with it and see where you can take it. Next level. 
Bravo. So I would always advise using graph paper or some kind of squared paper to support your pupils at the beginning of this, but it doesn't look great when you want to have that show off piece displayed on the wall. So what you need to use is plain paper and go large. I would go at least A3 size, A2 would be amazing if you can. But one of the problems with that is that if you don't have the grid, it's knowing where to begin in your paper. So a simple trick is to take your paper, fold it in half and then fold it in half again and then when you open it up right in the middle of the cross that's your center point so that's where you're going to put your zero of your x y axes and you're going to draw from that point onwards exploration is key so once they've got that curve let them just play While you're here, you might as well subscribe and when you do, click that little bell logo because that way you'll get an email notification when I upload new videos. Um, you can like, that makes a really, really big difference if you like my videos. Um, and you can share it, particularly with your teacher friends and peer groups because this really is about supporting teachers and children through teachers to have really exciting art experiences. So the more people who see this video, I mean, the better it is for everyone, right?